Hello friends and welcome to PyShine. Today, we will first talk about rendering video at a desired frame rate. From an MP4 file, we will extract the sound data, and send both audio and video streams from a server to the client. Alright, let's start by using an MP4 file. In Python, the Q module is especially useful in threaded programming, when information must be exchanged safely between multiple threads. In a FIFO queue, the first tasks added are the first retrieved. So, we will use FIFO queue to deposit the frames of video and then retrieve them. We will keep the size of Q to 10 frames. By using OpenCV, let's read the frames per second of this video. We can call it its inherent frame rate. Let's save and run to print its value in the terminal. So, we have found that its frame rate is 25. Therefore, the time taken by one frame will be 1 divided by the frame rate. Alright, let's make a function that will read the frames from the video capture and deposit them to the queue. We will keep the width of each frame to 400 pixels so that, with a reduced size, it can be easily sent to the client on a single datagram of UDP. By simply using the queue.put function, the frame is stored to the queue. Let's initialize the variables to find the current frame rate. Now, we will call the threading.thread function to start the video stream generator function. Let's save and run. To check if the queue is working fine under the thread, let's print the size of queue. You can observe that, after printing up to 10, the operation of putting frames is halted, because the maximum size has reached. We can press Ctrl plus C to cancel. Let's start a while loop, to display the frames, that are taken from the queue. You can increase the size of queue to store more frames, and then render them, at the desired frame rate. Here, we will add text to the frame, 
to display the current frame rate. Now, let's calculate the current frame rate as quickly as possible. We will only count the time taken by one frame and then divide it by that interval. Please note that CV2 wait key function takes the time as an integer in milliseconds to keep the image in the window. So here, let's keep it to 1 millisecond. We will use os.exit function to exit the running code. Let's save and run. We observe that the frame rate is about 60, which is much higher than the inherent frame rate of this video file. To observe the variation in frame rate, let's print it and run again. You can see that the frame rate is varying at each frame. So, let's try to run this video at its inherent frame rate of 25. We need to provide the sample time in milliseconds to the wait key function. So, we multiply it by 1000. Now, we can see that the average frame rate is about 25. However, this frame rate can be further stabilized by varying the duration of the sample time. If the measure frame rate is higher than the desired, the video is rendering too fast. So, we need to increase the delay, let's say 1 millisecond, or 0.001 seconds. If the measure frame rate is less than the desired, we can decrease the delay by the same amount, so that the frame is rendered faster. Finally. If the frame rate is equal to the desired frame rate, then we can pass it as it is. Let's save and run the code. We can observe that the average frame rate is about the same as desired. Now, we try another video. We can observe that this video has inherent frame rate of 60 and the measure frame rate is also about the same value. We can increase the frame to count value to 10 to observe a better average value.
The value of measured frame rate will be better if we increase the frames to count. However, it will take about 20 frames to update the time interval. Our next goal is to extract the sound and send the video over UDP socket and the audio over TCP socket. At the start, we will just send audio and video without controlling the frame rate. We have added the server and client codes. For details, please watch over previous tutorials about UDP and TCP socket programming. The links are available in the description. We will use FFmpeg in the command string to extract the WAV file that contains audio data. We can observe that the audio and video are out of synchronization. In fact, the frame rate is lower than the inherent value. The audio is normal and finished, on the other hand, the video frames are still coming at the client. Now, let's uncomment the lines of code to control the frame rate. You can observe that the audio and video are properly synchronized at the client or receiver side. The link to source code is available in the description. That's all for today. Have a nice day and see you again.